Hi, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. This video is going to be a little bit different than most. It's not a project video. What I'm going to be doing instead is, since I had friends in uh, doing a tour of the shop the other day, someone asked me to post a video of the process I went around by actually building the shop. Uh, unfortunately, that was in the fall of 2012. I wasn't aware of YouTube at that point. I had no concept that I was eventually going to be filming my work here in the shop. I might have done a couple things a little bit different, but luckily I did take a lot of pictures. And so what I'm going to do is stitch together those still photos, apologize for that, and I'll sort of talk through what I did, some of the decisions I made, and how I went about actually building the shop. So those of you who see my channel and see me working in here, it continues to evolve. It doesn't look like it did when I finish. Two years from now, it's not going to look like it does now, and I think that's a, I think that's a good thing. So if you're interested, please follow along. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Uh, maybe you'll even learn something. Uh, but... Please enjoy. Thanks a bunch. So here's the beginning of the project. It's my basement. So we bought our house largely because it had an unfinished basement and uh, with a walkout. So here's the beginning of first couple of deliveries. I took a ton of planning. I really wanted to make sure that uh, I didn't waste time in materials. I wanted the space to be as efficient as it possibly could be. So uh, I laid it all out, designed it as best I could, left some flexibility and uh, I got materials delivered and then I got to work. So after everything was dropped in the driveway, I slowly started moving it down into the basement and setting it up in stacks as you can see here. Both the walls and the floor are poured concrete and so step one, I started by covering the walls with this foam insulation material. Uh, I, in addition to covering the walls, I also taped all the seams and once that was done, I began framing out the space, both the walls, the ceiling, and all of the soffits around all my HVAC equipment. I put R13 fiberglass insulation both in the ceiling as well as in the walls uh, between all of the studs. After running nailers on 16 inch centers, here's the first sheet of drywall on the ceiling. For the ceiling, I use 5 8 inch fire code drywall. Doing all these wacky soffits was a little bit of a challenge, but uh, I got it done. The one piece of video I have is this that I shot on my phone. This is the ceiling, uh, completely drywalled, uh, walking around. Here you can see it just before I start sheetrocking the walls. Here's the first sheet of rock up on the wall. And then progress as I worked my way around. So here have a couple views after taping and mudding. Definitely not a job I'm really good at, but uh, if I go slow and take my time, uh, I would likely get fired the first day as a drywall guy, but finally get it done. I didn't take any pictures during painting because I was all suited up and I sprayed, so I actually bought a commercial grade sprayer. I did two coats of primer and then three coats of paint. I used a nice, what I thought was bright, neutral color uh, that I thought would help spread the light around in the shop. And speaking of light, these next couple of shots here are once I've installed the fluorescence on the ceiling. It was definitely better from this point forward, not working with those stupid shop lights and all the shadows and cords that you have to deal with with those. So the next huge task was the floor. So I started with a six mil plastic vapor barrier and I covered the whole floor with some healthy overlaps at the seams. I have ankle issues and wanted some cushion on the concrete so my next layer was 3 8 inch accordion foam. I'm showing here how I put the electrical box in the floor for my table saw and my router table which are basically in the center of the shop. 
So these next couple shots here are just laying down the 3 8 accordion foam. Not only insulation against the cold slab, but a little bit of cushion underneath the subsequent layers of floor to come. Next on top of the foam is 3 quarter inch tongue and groove uh, subfloor plywood. This plywood was laid at 90 degree angles to the foam underneath. And this plywood is Tapcon screwed into the concrete. Here we're testing the springs on our old Honda minivan. It's filled with 3 quarter inch oak hardwood flooring. Check out that sweet beard. It was hot, sweaty work moving that stuff down into the basement on a hot day. On top of the sheets of plywood subfloor goes rolls of tar paper. I used a laser to make sure I got the critical first row of flooring perfectly straight. I put the flooring down using a pneumatic flooring stapler. Because I used the cheapest utility grade oak, I had to go back and fill a bunch of holes and pores and cracks with a mix of epoxy, sawdust, and dye. Here's the beginning of sanding. Lots and lots and lots of sanding. At this point, I could have changed my mind and made going with a dance studio instead of a wood shop. I used a really high quality oil based polyurethane specifically made for floors. Just be aware if you're considering using a product like this, this stuff gives off a lot of odor and it frankly stank up our whole house for a long, long time. This is the end of the first of what would eventually be three coats with sanding in between each coat. Here you can see me doing sanding that first coat. This is the third and final coat wet and then completely dried. During this time working on the floor I had moved all of my shop equipment temporarily into the other side of the basement. So this is sort of the disaster that was my temporary shop space during this period of time. Where's the joiner? Oh yeah, over by the fridge. Where else would it be? After almost three months, it was finally move-in day. So here's the beginning of starting to set up shop in the proper space. These are recycled cabinets from my brother and sister-in-law's kitchen when they had their kitchens remodeled. And here's the beginning of the build of a proper miter saw station.
building new cabinets to nearly match those of existing recycled cabinets from a friend's kitchen from their kitchen remodel. So there you have it. That's how the shop looked about six years ago when I first finished it. Uh, before I had multiple simultaneous projects ongoing, before I'm trying to build Christmas gifts for family and friends. But uh, here's a little bit more of a glimpse of what the shop currently looks like. Uh, if there's interest, please let me know and maybe I'll do a shop tour of all of the equipment and the way I'm currently set up. But thanks for following along. I really appreciate you watching. Take care uh, and have a good one.